I'll demonstrate a bunch of different planer sleds, explain pros and cons and my preferences, and go over all the reasons why I use a sled on my planer. 3 quarter inch melamine is a good material for planer sleds because it provides a slick surface on the bottom for the sled to slide smoothly. And on the top, tape sticks to it really well and also cleans up well. So let's start with the really short work piece that I also want to be thin, so I resaw it down the middle and now I have two pieces to run through the planer. And these pieces are too short to run directly through the planer, so we need to use a sled. With the use of some double-sided tape, both pieces placed end to end are just about an inch longer than the distance between my planer rollers, so that's long enough when you're using a sled. Let's send that through the planer and see how it goes. After a couple of passes, the bandsaw marks are all cleaned up. However, not the best result. With the light reflection just right, you can see the snipe marks from the planer. That's often really not a problem for me, depending on how I plan to sand it or what I'm going to be using it for, but let's say I didn't want those snipe marks. Then I could just tape down a sacrificial piece to both the leading edge and trailing edge. It's about the same thickness as the work piece. And after running that through, now the snipe marks are on the sacrificial pieces and not on the work piece. Let's say that I had only one really short piece, I tape it down to the sled, but it's really just too short to run through the planer like this. So in this case, even if I don't care about snipe, I still need the leading and trailing edge sacrificial pieces. And maybe not necessary with this melamine, but still, I like to put some paste wax on the bottom of the sled so it glides through the planer. Moving on to planing some really thin pieces, like veneer thin. My planer only goes to about an eighth of an inch, but with the sled I'll be able to plane much thinner than that. The simplest sled approach is just to glue down or tape down the leading edge. The tape on the leading edge is for two reasons. First is to keep the workpiece from being pulled forward off the sled by the rollers, and the second reason is to keep the leading edge down when first contacting the cutter blades. Because with the planer's rollers pushing down, it could potentially cause the leading edge of a really thin piece of wood to lift up as it goes into the cutters, and that would end up getting shredded. So a lot of people use this approach, but I'm really not crazy about it because the tape itself has thickness, and I'm worried that'll cause some variation in the final thickness of my workpiece. And also, if I have a whole stack of thin pieces to plane together, more than will fit on the sled at the same time, then it's a big distraction to have to be dealing with the tape on and off with every pass through the planer. So I'm going to make a leading edge cleat for the sled so that I don't have to use tape. Taking the short pieces from earlier, I'm cutting a 45 degree angle across the end. I'm using Epe because it's super hard and I just happen to have some left over from a recent project, but maple or oak or any hardwood would work. I secure it to the sled with some double sided tape and also put some CA glue on the leading edge because I just want to make sure, extra sure, that it's solidly attached. This 45 degree angle will act as a cleat to hold down the work piece and being hardwood hopefully it'll have some durability to it. And it needs to be at least as thin or thinner than any workpiece I'll ever want to use it with, so a few passes through the planer are needed, and because it's so short, I need to add an extra piece so the rollers will pull it all the way through, same as we discussed earlier. I'm going to use this sled configuration with some paduke that I resawed into some thin strips. I'm going to use it on an upcoming project. I want the final pieces to be less than a tenth of an inch thick, so I resaw them to about an eighth of an inch and I'll plane them down from there. So there's one piece that's a lot thicker than the others. It was the remainder after the last resaw cut, so I'm going to get it first planed down to about the same thickness as the other pieces. The cleat will keep the workpiece from being pulled forward off the sled by the rollers as well as hold down the leading edge as it first contacts the cutters. No tape or glue needed. And you may be thinking, how in the world does that cleat hold down the leading edge if it's thinner than the workpiece? Well, the idea is when the front roller first grabs it to pull it through, that it wedges the workpiece down and forward and jams it into the cleat. And it's really just friction at that point that holds it there. So it's important to push it into the planer slowly and really allow the roller to grab it and pull it in. 
Now with all the pieces about the same starting thickness, I could go ahead and run them through just like this if I didn't care about a little bit of snipe. But to eliminate the snipe, I'm going to add another feature to the sled. Just cutting a thin strip from a 2x4 and then splitting it down the middle. Then I have some runners that I'm going to tape on each side of the sled. And these extend beyond the work pieces on both the leading and the trailing edge. So the snipe will be only on the runners and not on the work piece. And these runners need to be a starting thickness of at least as thin or thinner than the starting thickness of my work pieces. We don't want the work pieces rattling around loose in there. So I plane down the runner so everything's about the same thickness to start with. My sled is wide enough. I could have put all four pieces together, but just wanted to demonstrate. So let's say you had 10 or 20 of these pieces. That with each pass or depth setting of the planer, you want to do all pieces before making another pass. It involves taking the pieces on and off the sled many times. And it's one of the benefits of using the cleat instead of just taping down the leading edge to the workpiece. Okay, the end result is some nice pieces of veneer, just less than a tenth of an inch thick, and the sled is very reusable. The leading edge cleat is fine to always be thinner than the work piece and will rarely, if ever, need to be replaced. Although new side runners will be needed each time you use the sled, since they get planed down along with the work piece. This sled could also be used if you're interested in eliminating snipe on even thicker work pieces, as long as the runners are consistent thickness to the work piece. Here I'm just running some typical 3 quarter inch thick pieces through and you get a completely snipe free result. And it's also worth noting there are other ways to eliminate snipe without a sled. Most notably, just run a sacrificial board through before and after your work pieces. Either way you're going to need some sacrificial pieces, either the runners on the sled or the leading and trailing pieces without the sled. Before moving on to the last sled configuration, just a quick look at how snipe happens. Here's a close-up look inside the planer, given my limited camera skills. Snipe can happen on the leading edge of the board when the board first hits the back roller and jostles either the board or the cutter carriage. And snipe happens on the trailing edge of the board when the board comes off of the front roller. I don't know how many times I've said the word snipe in this video. It is a subject to the video and it's important to know how to deal with it when you need to deal with it, but I just want to put it in context. 95% of the time I'm using a planer, snipe isn't a concern. I'm not even thinking about it. All planers leave some snipe, but the snipe on this planer is so minimal it's almost unnoticeable, and I'm probably going to do some sanding at some point on the project anyway. I just didn't want you to think I'm like a snipe fanatic or anything. Okay, now the last topic is using the sled to flatten boards. And this is really best done on a joiner, but if you don't have a joiner, or if your workpiece is too wide for your joiner, as in this case with this wide piece of walnut that I have, and you can see it has a bit of a twist in it. If I just sent this through the planer as is, the twist would still be there, so I need to use a sled to flatten one side first. People use shims and tape them down so they don't jiggle loose, but my preference is hot glue, it just seems simple enough to me. Squeeze a little under in a few places wherever there's a gap, enough to hold it solid so it doesn't rock as it goes through. So after a couple passes through, I have one side that's completely flat. And after removing it from the sled, then I turn it over and run it through the planer to get the other side parallel. Thanks so much for watching. 